Hello, welcome or welcome back to this fourth episode in this uh, class or series or course for Denise. And today we will focus focus on the flexibility of the spine and chest and see how that relates to the knees and can improve the knees. So without further ado, let's start with the lesson. And for this, uh, please come to lie on your back. End of the sentence, start of the sequence. So, <laughs> on the back, ah, like a good old brick, <laughs> or like a soft towel, very nice. So, on the back, what was our lesson? Our movement was to stand one foot, the right foot, for example. Ah, okay, right foot is standing. Where do you place your left leg? Where do you place your hands? So, like a soft towel, ah, you're just resting on the floor. Right foot is standing and the right foot, so this was the first and the second and the third video, the foot was sliding or we did slide our feet forwards and backwards. And how fast did we pull the foot closer to the pelvis and how slow did we slide it downwards away and we did circles and so forth and the same thing with the left foot as well or with both feet and circles with both feet i hope you did that because that's where we will continue today and we will continue our starting position will be uh, both feet standing please so have both feet standing and see how close can you already place your feet to your pelvis and how much can you let go of your legs and without the legs falling apart or falling over so when you have your feet fairly far away from your pelvis maybe you can feel hopefully or sense that you need a lot of tension just to hold the legs in place. And one of our goals is to be able to have the feet just standing, the legs just standing and forget about them, not only in our awareness, but also that they don't need that much energy to hold the position. So we had the sliding of the feet, so the lower extremities, and then there's one upper extremity, our head. We will focus on the head today. So our first movement is to slide the head instead of the feet. So there's only one head, which makes everything simple. <laughs> so where can you slide your head to? And to have a little bit of a system here, a sequence, start to slide your head a little bit to the left uh, and see how do you uh, even drag your head to the left mm. and and back to where was it how how do you remember where your head was so good question why is it so easy to find the initial parking position of all the possible positions where the head was resting in the beginning so rest your head where you feel it is not towards the right and not towards the left and not too much up and down. It's like a, a neutral resting position and then start the movement again to slide the head on the floor to the left and back. And if you are creative, you can already experience that there's so many ways to slide your head. And we want to find a way like water flows the uh, the natural pathway of your head so let's help that a little bit so when you slide your head to the left then slide also your left hand bring your awareness to your left hand slide your left hand down towards your left foot which means your left shoulder also moves closer to your left foot and in turn drags your head along So a couple of times. 
and how much should the head roll, should it roll, or can you keep your nose pointed towards the ceiling, and yet there is a the side bending, a lot of things happening, so just observe the how, how your head changes orientation, how you feel the back of your head sliding alongside over the floor, rubbing the floor. Could be a nice rub back of the head against the floor. And when your left hand slides down towards your left foot, you might also already have felt at the same time your right hand slides away from your right foot and your right shoulder as well slides away from your right foot when, yes, when your shoulder girdle, the center of your neck moves to the left. Actually, that's a good idea. What if we don't think of the back of the head, but the center of the neck, the back of the neck hovering over the floor? Or if you think about C7, where your cervical spine meets your thoracic spine, when that point slides to the left, the top of your chest slides to the left. So when you think of different spots alongside your spine, instead of just focusing on the back of your head, how does this change the movement? So maybe you want to take your left hand and touch your spine somewhere. And so you can help with your hand to focus on the spine moving to the left. How does this change the movement itself, your experience of the movement? So that's a good strategy to improve movement awareness, to bring your awareness, your point of attention to different parts in your body for the same movement. All right, and then take a short break, make a short interruption of this movement, just to feel how you're resting now. We, maybe your left side feels a little bit different than your right. In, in your perception, how you rest on the floor, And then stand both feet again, and we will do the same thing to the right. So start to drag your head, slide your head, glide your head to the right a little bit. See ah, if that's easier or harder. And then what did we think of? We were thinking we could think of the right hand sliding downwards towards the right foot or the right shoulder sliding downwards towards the right foot or the left hand sliding away from the left foot. You can, you can think of different points to observe this movement from different viewpoints, from the back of your neck, from the nape of your neck, C7, with your thoracic spine bending, sliding, you can even think of side bending. So when you move your head to the right, the right side caves in and the left side bulges outwards. Different ways to look at the same movement takes away the boringness of a movement maybe even. So this is quite interesting to, to look at movement from so many different angles and to have so many sensations with such a simple movement. And then take a short break. Maybe keep your feet standing or let's take a proper break. The feet extended like our starting resting position. Ah, okay. So now, for example, I feel like I am a little bit bent to the right because that was the last movement I did. So how, how is it for you? Do you feel more even? Do you feel like <laughs> also a little bit bent to the right side? 
as if it's as if the body remembers the last movement in its posture. All right, then stand your feet again, and we will combine the two movements. So the head to the left with all you have got, with all the thinking you can adjust, uh, put to it, or the head, slide the head to the right, the left hand to the left foot, the right hand to the right foot. Well, maybe that got a little bit easier. And then uh, let's remove the hands a little bit. Bring your hands together on top of your chest. Or maybe remove them all together. So interlace your arms. So bring your maybe your right hand towards your left shoulder and your left hand towards your right shoulder. So we just take the arms out of the way and then try the sliding again. How is it without arms? If we slide the head uh, to the left and to the right, <laughs> without the arms at all. Does this make things complicated when we're suddenly not humans with arms anymore, but just a worm, <laughs> a, a snake-like being having to bend or a, a, a bamboo-like stick bending from one side to the other. And, and if you do this without the arms, of course it helps if you maybe think of your, the back of your head is sliding, Shoulders, you still have your shoulders, the right shoulder towards your right foot or the left shoulder towards your left foot. And then maybe you have to move your pelvis to, to make this movement easier. So you, and you can use your feet to press or to lift or to slide your feet. How, how do you have to move with everything else? So suddenly the whole body comes into play, your feet can move and your knees can move and the pelvis can move in order to make it possible for your head to slide left and right <laughs> if you don't use your arms at all. And what movements can you find there? What do you discover? What helps and what doesn't help? So we, in the last lessons, we had the motion of sliding the feet to the right and to the left. So maybe that helps to, when you slide your right foot to the outside, to the right, maybe that helps with sliding your head to the right. And when you slide your left foot to the left, maybe that helps to slide the head to the left. So with this movement, we break free of this static image we have from sitting for so many hours and we start to be like everything moves together, everything is connected. All right, so let's take a break after this whole body movement. Take a break on the back and just rest and feel how it is to rest now after such a whole body movement. So it might be quite different, it might be quite improved. You might feel more at ease, more flat to the floor. flattened. And then we will continue the sequence on the front side. So please turn around and come to lie on your belly. Here on the belly, bring your arms, your, your hands, if that's possible, close to your head.
Oh, let's make it up. You could put your left hand on top of your right hand, for example, and your right cheek on top of your left hand. Something like this. And then we will start, or, or maybe you can <laughs> press your nose against the floor, just how you're comfortable. And then we will do the same thing and slide the head to the left. So we will start with the same direction to slide the head to the left. How, how does that work when you're on the belly? So you just flipped over like a pancake. <laughs> but, but it's such a different situation. We have to like rearrange our thinking. How do we drag the head to the left when we're on the belly? And what is the role of the left arm? Maybe you have to put your left hand in a completely different position. Maybe you have to put your left hand down. So explore what is a good position for your left hand to help to slide your head to the left and back to center. And so you might have to lift your head a little bit or in order to be able to slide it and, and take breaks in between. So don't lift your head and go back and forth and back and forth, but take breaks, rest your head and continue the movement, rest your head, continue the movement. Maybe change your arm position, change how you think. Do you think of your left hand? Do you think of your left shoulder? Do your left side shortening, right side lengthening? Do you think of your right arm? So remember what we did on the back, which was fairly familiar, and now you're on the front. How does this movement change when you flipped over? And then take a, a short break. Mm, just feel how it is to be on your front side, on the floor, in this movement sequence, in this time for yourself, to improve yourself, to feel comfortable, to make yourself more comfortable. And then do the same movement to the right side. So start to slide your head to the right and see how does everything connect? What do you have to do? What can you think of? How does your thinking change the movement? Take breaks in between, which will restore your, refresh your sensors, your ability to observe the movement, but also might uh, give you an opportunity to, to look at the movements fresh, to discover something new, to, uh, to improve the movement. And then at some point, of course, if you haven't yet, you can combine sliding the head from the left to the right and see how do you, when do you turn your head, how do you turn your head, do you rub your nose, your forehead, your chin. Yes, so when you continue with this movement, maybe you start to run into this question, should you extend your neck or should you flex your neck? Yes, so this, this is a different question then. This is something we can discover 
on the front side, at which height should you drag your face along the floor? And here we discover there's not only left and right, but you can bring your head closer to your pelvis or your nose closer to your pelvis or further away from your pelvis. So let's, let's try this together. So keep your head in the middle and slide your nose closer to your pelvis. It's like a, a flexion or further away, which is an extension where you lift the head. And, and how <laughs> close can you bring your head, your nose, towards your belly, for example, your belly button, while sliding the head a little bit more to the left or more to the right, so this starts to be like circles. And how does this movement change when you use your hands a lot <laughs> or if you don't use your hands at all? So let's take away your hands like we did before in lying on the back. So what happens when you hold your, when you cross your hands behind your back? And so yeah, with the left hand, grab your right hand or the other way around at your back. And then... <laughs> This is like uh, ski jumping and then with the hands on your back, try to slide your head to the left and to the right or your nose closer to your pelvis or further away from your pelvis. And remember also from, from the other side, where we were on the back, how your pelvis can move, how your legs can move, how, how your whole body can support this motion of the head left and right, up and down. And, of course, take good care of yourself, so I don't want you to have back pain or anything. Just do what's comfortable, what's easy for you, where you, where you feel safe. <laughs> don't beat yourself up over the movement, but find a quality that makes you feel mm, comfortable. Mm, this is nice to be on the floor, to touch the floor, to rub yourself against the floor, to, to, to move and to feel safe and comfortable and enjoy your movements and how you explore the world or this little part of your carpet <laughs> of your embodied being your embodied world through movement through thinking through exploring through discovery and of course in turn this will make you feel better and when you feel better which means you have less pain uh, which means you feel better These unusual movements. All right, so <laughs> please return on your back. Let's see how is it on the back.
and then stand your right foot yes and see how you bring your right foot to standing and slide your right foot a little bit away from your pelvis and closer to your pelvis and see how is this movement now in this moment in the fourth lesson as compared it was in the beginning how do you feel your whole self with all the things you know now from the previous movements from the data you generated and collected from your experiences how does your pelvis your side your head participate how what is your head movement in relation to your the movement of your right foot when your right foot slides closer and further away or to more to the right and to the left or also look at this with your left foot so instead of the right foot standing have your left foot standing and slide your left foot or slide both feet and see how you can move your whole body your whole self and then slower and slower and more calm or of course peaceful at ease at peace bring your feet to standing both feet standing so there's one movement left can you guess what it is because it's a sequence the three letters and what is the fourth letter you know this kind of logic puzzle there was these movements what is the last movement so the movement of the head focus on the back of your head and see how you slide how can you slide the back of your head closer towards your pelvis <laughs> so we were sliding before the head left and right but how can you slide the back of your head closer to your pelvis what do you have to do <laughs> to slide the back of your head closer to your pelvis and further away so yes that's an arch an arching movement and try the different directions when you go in your midline or when you slide your head a little bit to the right and then closer to what is it your your sacral bone or your tailbone if you slide the head a little bit to the left and then slide the head closer to your tailbone and how can you help with your elbows when you press with your elbows against the floor and how can you help with your feet when you slide your feet closer to the pelvis or further away or one foot closer to the pelvis and further away so maybe that's more movement to the right when you slide your right foot or when you slide your left foot maybe that helps you on the left side or both feet so once you get the hang of it and once your back muscles start to work it starts to be quite an interesting movement it's like wow did this move for in the last century is this the first time this <laughs> this century these muscles are working <laughs> Or how is it when you don't use your elbows, when you don't press your elbows against the floor? <laughs> how is it when you help with your arms or when you don't help with your arms? And then, <laughs> so let's end this lesson here. Quite interesting, isn't it? Quite, quite marvelous. Uh, let's do a flexion movement to end this lesson. So bring your nose closer to your pelvis or you lift your head to bring your head closer to your feet. So that's the opposite of the extension we just had. Just a little flexion or a little extension maybe we can go in both directions flexion extension side bending twist 
Now we're back to the roots of the Feldenkrais method. We're back to the judo movements where you can go from one side to the other to defend yourself or to attack. Yes, <laughs> these kind of movements come from this kind of <laughs> lesson. All right, so <laughs> a, last, a last little rest on the back. See how it feels like when you're flattened on the floor. And not only that, now you're more ready for movement. So to slide your head a little bit to the right and to the left. Now maybe you have the feeling it comes more from your center. Everything connects. It's easier to move in all directions. Your body is activated. <laughs> Old patterns have been restored, revisited, polished. Dust busted. Ah. All right, so that feels very nice, but we need to come to an end of this lesson. And we end this lesson, as most always, to come up to standing, please, and see how it is in a standing. How flexible and ready for movement are we in standing to defend ourselves, to attack, or just to be at ease, still ready for anything, for any adventure. <laughs> Cleaning the kitchen adventure. <laughs> All right, so it was my pleasure to teach you this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed teaching it. Thank you for your support and see you in the next video.